Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. Sorry I haven't done a video in a while, but um, I've been forced out of hibernation by uh, recent events. Uh, lately, uh, this came out on Monday, uh, September 14th. Uh, there was an article about uh, signs of life on Venus. So I want to talk about that, and we're going to extrapolate out. Uh, now, they, it's, they didn't find life. They found signs of life. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to extrapolate a bigger picture as well on why almost certainly this is life uh, on Venus and elsewhere, as we're going to show in a moment. We're going to look at the big picture. But we're going to first focus in on, on what this discovery was. Um, I'm going to put up a little thing of Venus here. Uh, this is Venus. Uh, it's the second planet in our solar system. Although most search for life has focused on Mars because Mars has a more hospitable temperature, uh, Venus is more like Earth than Mars is. Uh, it's just a little bit smaller than Earth. Uh, same size, uh, almost, like I said, a little bit smaller. And similar in many other ways as well in composition. But because uh, the temperature gets up to about like 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like 400 something Celsius, it can melt lead. Uh, there's always been thought that life could not exist. Uh, but what they found, and we're gonna we're gonna cut to that in a moment, is that life exists not on the uh, surface but in the atmosphere or that they believe they found signs of life in the atmosphere. And we're gonna to cut to that right now. So we're gonna to cut to Reuters article. Uh, this is the Reuters article, I'll put it up here real quick. Uh, from Monday, September 14th, it reads, Potential Sign of Alien Life Detected on Inhospitable Venus, it's written by Will Dunham. Uh, I'm gonna read about three uh, paragraphs on this, and then we're gonna talk about it within a larger context as well. Scientists said on Monday they have detected in the harshly acidic clouds of Venus a gas called phosphine that indicates microbes may inhabit Earth's inhospitable neighbor, Venus, a tantalizing sign of potential life beyond Earth. The researchers did not discover actual life forms but noted that on Earth, phosphine is produced by bacteria thriving in oxygen-starved environments. The international scientific team first spotted the phosphine using the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii and confirmed it using the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA, radio telescope in Chile. I was very surprised. Stunned, in fact, said astronomer James Grieve of Cardiff University in Wales, leader author of the research published in journal Nature Astronomy. He was very surprised, stunned. We're going to talk about that and why. Um, I'm going to post, I'm going to, there's three articles I'm going to go over. This article, uh, I'm going to post down below a link to it. So if you want to go in further uh, about, about it, you can read the article below, but I'm going to talk about what they talk about in the article now at the top of my head real quick. Essentially, phosphine is a, uh, it's a phosphorus atom with three hydrogen atoms connected to it. It's one phosphine, three hydrogen. Now, this is a very unstable uh, compound, and it shouldn't be able to exist in the atmosphere of Venus. They found it high in the clouds of Venus using these, uh, these telescopes. Uh, they detected it undeniably. They can tell from the chemical signatures. They look, boom, it has these chemical signature. Uh, it's phosphine. So they know it's phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. The thing is, the atmosphere of Venus is filled with organic compounds, uh, 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 oxygen compounds, I believe they are. And these oxygen compounds, as we stated, phosphine has uh, one phosphorus and three hydrogen. Hydrogen readily combines with oxygen. So if you have all these oxygen compounds in the Venus atmosphere, it shouldn't, phosphine shouldn't be able to exist. It should readily combine with these, or, uh, these uh, oxygen compounds and just not be there. 
So for it to be actually be seen there, that means something would have to be continually producing it. Produces it, gets eaten by, 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 by the, uh, the, the uh, oxygen compounds, but it continues to get produced and eaten up, produced, eaten up, etc., etc. So there has to be something producing it. And they investigated all potential sources on Venus that could produce phosphine. None of them proved viable. The most likely candidate is phosphine. Because phosphine uh, is produced by microbes on Earth as well, but only in oxygen-starved environments, like the lake, bottom of lake sediments, um, uh, what else do they say? Rice fields, uh, anywhere there's no oxygen, life finds a way to exist. That's, that's just the way life is, and that's why we're going to talk about this in a broader context as well. Um, because I've said this for decades, and that's what this whole channel is about in many ways. And what I'm doing uh, is I've always said that life is replete in the universe. It's not just our planet we're not just this small isolated there's out in outer space between the planets in outer space i guarantee you there's life out there floating between the planets every single planet is going to have life out in deep space where the solar system doesn't exist between stars there's going to be life everywhere we're going to talk about that i'm going to expand upon that and i'm going to shoot in this video i'm going to tell you why uh, so uh, now this is a, like, as they stated, this is a sign of life. This isn't life, but life is the most likely explanation. They don't have any other likely logical explanation. So now we're gonna talk about how this relates in the big, this is just one tree in the forest. And we see this tree and we say, aha, here's a tree that shows life. Is this, is this forest? Yes, and I'm gonna show that right now. There's this forest of life that exists everywhere, essentially. Um, we've been blinded to it, but we're, we're at this point, it, it's undeniable. I'm gonna talk about that right now. So another similar event happened just about a year ago. So we already had this sign of life on Venus that came out about a year ago we had I think it was 2019 uh, not sure the month it was but I'm gonna matter of fact let me get my little uh, uh, thing here is this it? yeah this is it um, isn't it this from a NASA article came out in 2019 uh, that talks about methane on Mars another sign of life Life produces several things. Phosphine is one in oxygen-starved environments. Another thing that uh, life produces is methane. You know, cows fart methane, I believe, if I'm correct. And there's microbes produce methane. Methane is produced by life, essentially. Um, so what they found uh, on Mars recently, and I'm gonna read off this, I'm gonna put the article right here right now. This is a NASA article, 2019 link down below reads the finding that they found from the Curiosity rover the findings suggest last week's methane detection on Mars the largest amount of the gas Curiosity has ever found was one of the transient methane plumes that have been observed in the past while scientists have observed the background levels rise and fall seasonally they haven't found a pattern in the occurrence of these transient plumes so they're finding methane produced on Mars, and they don't have an explanation for why this methane is produced, especially the way it is. It is definitely seasonal, seasonal but within that seasonality, they don't have an explanation for the variation. Life. Life is the most logical explanation again. So here again, there's another tree where we have a sign of life on Mars as well. I've done an entire... Um, video series long two or three hours long called ancient mars civilization a timeline of discovery i'm going to put up uh, one of these corners real quick a link to it so you can take a look at it um it talks about signs of a civilization on mars i mean not only do we have 
detections now that there was life, but we actually have evidence of civilizations on Mars, structures on Mars, all kinds of evidence of life on Mars. We believe that there was a massive destruction a long time ago. I've done a video on that as well. All that is in the Ancient Mars Civilization series. Um, so please, if you're interested, take a look. But once again, so we have Venus and Mars now. That's beginning to show that there's life everywhere. I'm gonna just throw in a little aside. I am absolutely convinced everything, every single planet is gonna have life. Jupiter, Mars, uh, Neptune, Uranus, all of them. I am almost guarantee it. Life, wherever it can find a niche, it will. That's what we're finding uh, on here on Earth and elsewhere. Now finally, I just wanna finish this off to show that life is not only proliferating in our solar system, but in deep space, outer space as well. Uh, this, I'm gonna cut to this article real quick, and it talks about uh, the Voyager. Voyager was a spacecraft that was uh, released by NASA, the United States uh, National Aeronautic and Space Administration. They, launched two uh, spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which ultimately went out to outside the solar system. Uh, ultimately, they went to a couple planets, took photographs, and then boom, they went out into the deep, deep, deep space. And they most recently left the solar system. The solar system is um, has a, what's called a heliosphere. Uh, it's a, the magnetism, the electromagnetism, the sun essentially causes like a bubble that keeps out the deep space. So our whole solar system is traveling in this bubble created by the sun, essentially, and it's called the heliosphere. Uh, Voyager 1 and 2 left the heliosphere, and what they found was remarkable, and we're gonna talk about that and why I think it's, it's another example that life proliferates. I'm gonna, this is from a JPL NASA a website, linked in below again, it says the sun's, this is talking about the Voyager, uh, what Voyager found when it left the, the solar system and went out into deep space and left the heliosphere. The sun's heliosphere is like a ship sailing through interstellar space. Both the heliosphere and interstellar space are filled with plasma, a gas that has had some of its atoms stripped of their electrons. So there's plasma in our solar system and outside our solar system. The plasma inside the heliosphere is hot and sparse, while the plasma in, in, in interstellar space is, excuse me, is colder and denser. The space between stars also contains cosmic rays or particles accelerated by exploded stars. So, but the important point here is that there's, there's plasma in here in the heliosphere in our solar system, but it's very hot and sparse, there's not a lot of it. But out there in deep space, it's cold and dense. It's an ocean of plasma, okay? And so all of deep space at this point is an ocean of plasma. And guess what lives in that ocean of plasma? Plasma beings, I'm certain of it. We're gonna find that deep space is inhabited by plasma beings, and we've actually seen them, I think. Um, I'm gonna cut to a video. Uh, it was recorded in 1996, I believe. It is of balls of light creating a crop circle. I had always thought that this was a hoax. The analysis, good analysis, all the good analysis of these videos has told me that it's real. Um, all the experts who look at it say this isn't, you know, some video trickery. These are real things that are happening here. But still, I was just so skeptical. So, like, that couldn't be real. Um, it was hard for me to wrap my brain around. Um, I'm going to tell you why I think it's real in a moment. But I think that these are the creatures that inhabit deep space. We know that plasma is cold dense, uh, that deep space is cold, dense plasma. It's an ocean of this plasma. You're gonna have plasma beings in there, just like in an ocean or a water world like Earth. What are we based on? We're based on water. 
We're water beings. We're 99 point something percent water. We don't live in water, we're, but we're essentially out there, they're gonna be plasma beings. We're gonna be essentially created of plasma. And that's what I think these are. I'm gonna to cut to this video real quick so you can watch this crop circle video of these balls of light creating this crop circle. Um, now, I'm using this solid evidence from NASA to expound and say that I'm certain these things are in deep space, but I'm gonna give a personal example as well once we come back. And I'll finish up this video with my personal example. But here's that video right now of the, those uh, the crop circles. Welcome back. So, you know, when I saw that, I thought it couldn't be real. Turns out, I, I think it is, and here's why. This happens, I, I'd have to go back and trace, I think it was 2018. I think it was 2018, yeah. It was the summer of 2018. Uh, I was on top of a parking garage on the higher floor. I looked up at the uh, sky there had been a storm thunderstorm and uh, I was just looking out it's three o'clock in the morning and I saw something coming at me now people who, who are, were on my Facebook from back here know about this I told about this and I actually produced a video uh, regarding this um, but so this isn't something new told this before but it's the first time I'm telling this on the YouTube channel so I see something coming from this angle in the sky towards me and a fur and, and that's three o'clock in the morning the storm's gone but it's still cloudy and you can see little flashes of light out in, you know um, in the sky from the storm that had passed and I see something floating right directly towards me and it's coming at like kind of an angle out of the sky. And as I'm watching it, at first I thought it was uh, one of those, uh, 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 what do you call those, uh, the white willowy things that float around in the sky. Uh, you know, uh, I forget what they call them, the dandelion uh, sprouts, whatever they are, they just float around the white things. You see them, you know, at the first I thought it was that because so slow and coming down but then I, I said no it's not that it's too big and then I thought it was a piece of paper I, I was just because you know it was far away and I was trying to make sense of what I was seeing but then I said no because a pe piece of paper would be going like this and it's just coming straight down at me and then it got close enough that I could make out details it looked like a plasma ball now a lot of now let me let me finish out what it did so it came down at an angle towards me it got to about 50 feet away and then went right kind of in front of me 50 feet away in the sky and I watched it pass me in the sky I watched it go all the way out and I kept on watching going and went all the way out into the horizon and to, out into space presumably Wow now a lot of people would say what you saw was electric ball lightning, and I'm gonna put up a picture of electric ball lightning here that I found online, which is, oh, what you saw was electric ball lightning. No, it wasn't electric ball lightning. It looked similar to that, but not like that. Um, in electric ball lightning, you see all those uh, white 
electrical sparks and everything, that's electrical ball lightning, and as electrical ball lightning has all these sparks inside of it. This had nothing like that inside of it. Um, it was like plasma-like, and it had a central light in the middle that diffused out, and it was circular, but it didn't have these sparks. Um, and its movement seemed very intelligent. It seemed like it was coming down towards me, looking at me out of curiosity and passed right in front of me as if it was observing me. Um, it seemed conscious and relatively intelligent. Um, I don't, will never believe that that was, um, could be ball lightning that I saw that night. Um, and it was at that point, once I saw that, I, then I said that 1996 video of the crop circles I saw was real. As soon as I saw that plasma ball come at me that night, I said, oh, that 1996 video that I just showed you now, that was real. Because now I've seen, <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes. It was amazing. And I think through deep space, I think, don't get me wrong, I think obviously they exist in, in the solar system space too, but I think this is a less hospitable environment for them. Uh, because as that article stated, while we are do have plasma in our solar system, it's hot and sparse. And as such, it would probably be less likely or less hospitable for these beings. And the deep space is their natural environment. Watch. Ultimately, I think I'll be found out to be true. Um, but that's the larger forest that I see this Venus and Mars come in as well. And why I think that uh, it states, it shows what I've been saying for decades. The universe is replete with life everywhere. Thanks for watching. Uh, everybody like, share, subscribe, comment, and have a great day.